Hello, happy Lori. How are you? This is Hina from Team Walat. And since you know, our channel Walat literally unites India because Kalyani ma'am is from South India. We from North India. All her students are from entire India, actually around the world, right? So Lori, you know, actually marks the end of winter and the beginning of the coming spring, right? So let's welcome spring with happiness. Today it's going to be bonfire, puja, everything. It'll be great, right? So happy Lodi from us to you. And this is Hina, you know me already. Today's novel of discussion is The French Lieutenant's Woman, a novel written by John Fowles. You know John Fowles. He was a British writer who lived from 1926 to 2005. The French Lieutenant's Woman was published in the year 1969. It belongs to the post-modernism literary period. And the genre of this novel is, it is a romance novel. It is a pastiche. It is a historiographic metafiction, which means it actually combines history, fiction and theory. It is a feminist novel. It is like a lot. Okay, you will come to know. The protagonist of this novel is a woman called Sarah Woodruff, who is also known by the names Tragedy or the French Lieutenant's Whore. Yes. And the primary setting of this novel is Lyme Regis, which is a coastal town in West Dorset in the mid 19th century, particularly from 1867 to 1869. And also other parts of Europe are there and America is also discussed in the novel as a location, but primarily you will find Lyme Regis. Okay, good enough. Are we ready to start? Look at this woman walking, you know, on, by this cliff side. She's looking down. What's happening? Who is this woman? She is Sarah Woodruff. Let's start. Sarah Woodruff lives in the coastal town of Lyme Regis. She works as a governess or like a partner at a wealthy, pious, but hypocritical woman called Mrs. Poltney. Mrs. Poltney is depicted like that high class, wealthy Victorian society woman who is hypocritical, but uh, you know, on the surface, she pretends to be very charitable and very, very engaging with poor people. No, she's not that. Who is she? Mrs. Poltney. She is the head, you know, in whose house Sarah Woodruff works. Okay. Sarah is considered to be a disgrace or a tragedy because, because she had an affair with an injured naval lieutenant who was washed ashore. So few years back, there was this French lieutenant whose name was Vergenese. Vergenis. He came, he was injured, he was taken care of by Sarah, they fell in love, they in fact had a physical relationship, but Vergenis left her, returned to France, married some other woman, and since that time, Sarah is an outcast in her own town, okay? And she has been taken in by Mrs. Poltney, just because Mrs. Poltney thinks that she's going to save her soul. Who? The haughty Mrs. Poltney is going to save Sarah's poor soul. Okay. It's like that. Understood? Now, whatever little time Sarah gets from her profession as a governess, she comes here and she starts walking on the cob, which is a stone jetty staring out to the sea. So she's walking, you know, on the cliff. She's literally just staring at the sea. Is she waiting for Varganese? Is she thinking that her life was a waste? What is she thinking? But she is this mysterious woman always like staring at the sea. Okay. Now meet the male protagonist of this novel who is called Charles Smithson. Charles Smithson is a paleontologist or I can say a person who reads about the history of earth with the help of fossils. Okay. He studies fossils. He's a naturalist. He's a Darwinist who Charles Smithson. This is his profession. Now, Charles Smithson is an orphan. Okay. He visits the coastal town of Lyme Regis along with his fiance, Ernestina Freeman. Charles, no matter, is an orphan, but his uncle's inheritance is going to be his. At least he thinks that way. Okay. His uncle is uh, unmarried right now. So he thinks that he's going to get his uncle's inheritance. 
Moreover, Ernestina Freeman belongs from a very wealthy family. She belongs to a wealthy family. So at least Charles knows that, yes, I will have an inheritance. Okay. So Charles is an educated man with a decent income, whereas Ernestina is a simple-minded daughter of a wealthy London tradesman. He deals with clothes, drapery business, who? Ernestina's papa. Now, while walking, you know, on the cliff, they find this mysterious woman looking down, looking at the sea. Who is this woman? Sarah. And who observed her? Charles and Ernestina. Ernestina's aunt who lives in this town, she's called Aunt Trantor, has told her a little bit about Sarah, but not clearly. So Ernestina knows a little bit, but Charles gets very curious about this woman. Okay. Literally, he gets intrigued, intrigued by Sarah. But because Charles is already engaged, he cannot meet Sarah in open. So he tries to meet Sarah in secret as he goes fossil hunting in the Undercliff. Undercliff is like this wilderness area of Lyme Regis where immoral activities take place. But usually Sarah goes at the Undercliff and she sleeps in the grass. So Charles goes there fossil hunting and meets Sarah. They meet once, they meet twice, they meet thrice. So have they have this three secret meeting without telling anybody. Charles and Sarah's secret meetings. During these three clandestine meetings, first Sarah is unsure whether she should tell the truth of her life. Then she says she wants to tell the truth of her life. Even Charles kind of gets very close to her. These meetings, I can say, bring them very close together. And ultimately, after confusions, ups and downs, Sarah being fired by, you know, her employer, Sarah runs away, but Sarah is found again by Charles. Ultimately, ultimately, Sarah tells, you know, Charles about her life. Sarah says that I slept with this French officer, but we never married. He left me. I'm an outcast in this town, blah, blah. As destined, Charles falls in love with Sarah. And do you know so much that he's ready to leave Ernestina for her? So he tells Sarah that go to Exeter, leave, you know, this place, Lyme Regis, go to Exeter. I would meet you there. Meanwhile, he goes to visit Ernestina's father. Basically, he does not want to break off the relationship just like that. He wants to do it like a gentleman. He goes to his father. He tells him, he goes to her father, sorry, Ernestina's father in London. And Charles tells him that I have lost my uncle's inheritance. And this is true. Uncle actually married a young girl who, you know, will give him an heir who will give him a son. So now uncle's inheritance is no more Charles. So Charles is out of inheritance. So Charles goes to Ernestina's father to tell him that, uh, look, I will not have any inheritance after marriage. Are you sure I should marry Ernestina? He just wants to break off like this. Okay. Then after this, after this, the narrator enters. The narrator who might be the author, John Fowles himself, enters the novel as a character. Can you imagine? Yes. He becomes a character and offers three different endings to this novel. So there are three different endings to the French lieutenant's woman. Until now, what has happened? Sarah has gone to Exeter. Charles went to London. And now three endings. First ending, listen. In ending number one, Charles will marry Ernestina. How? From London, Charles does not go to Exeter to meet Sarah. Rather, he returns to Lyme Regis, affirms his love for his fiancée Exeter, sorry, Ernestina, affirms his love for his fiancée Ernestina, and the two marry. After this, Charles starts working with his wealthy father-in-law in the drapery business. But as time passes, Charles realizes that he is not happy with Ernestina. There is not a happy marriage. And the narrator clearly does not tell us that what happens to Sarah. So Sarah remains a mystery in the first ending. But, but narrator dismisses this first ending quickly, saying that this is just a daydream by Charles. This ending did not happen. This ending did not happen. This is just a daydream. 
with this we move to the second ending but before the second ending and the third ending the narrator is seen on a train journey along with charles on this train journey the narrator tosses a coin like how it is done at the start of a cricket match <laughs> heads or tails he tosses a coin okay to decide which ending he should tell first and after he tosses the coin he decides to tell this ending as the first that is the second okay so listen to the ending number 2 in this charles is left all alone but hopeful how charles meets sarah and the two spend a passionate time together physically during this time charles realizes that sarah was lying she is indeed a virgin remember sarah said that i had a physical relationship with the french lieutenant but charles realizes that she is a virgin charles gets so emotional that he breaks off his engagement with ernestina proposes to sarah through a letter but sadly this letter never reaches sarah why charles servant whose name is sam fails to deliver the letter but ernestina's father has already disgraced him and his uncle has married leaving him with no inheritance so now charles does not have sarah charles does not have money charles feels suicidal depression to escape his overwhelming sadness he travels to europe and america whereas an ignorant sarah who knows nothing that you know charles has left ernestina for her she flees to london 2 years later charles lawyer whose name is montag he finds sarah in london she is living happily in the chelsea house of the painter and poet dante gabriel rossetti can you imagine so if a question comes dg rossetti appears you know as a character in it is the french lieutenant's woman okay so sara is living creatively artistically in dg rossetti's house charles house uh, sorry dg rossetti's house which is called as chelsea house but then charles realizes that sara is a child sara has a child and the father of this child is charles can you imagine charles realizes that sara's child is in fact their child charles and sara's this makes charles so happy and so hopeful that he would finally reunite with sara along with the child the three will reunite who three charles sara and their child with this the second ending is done now the third ending the third ending is also outside dg rossetti's house the narrator stands outside 16 chain walk basically dg rossetti's house and he turns back his pocket watch by 15 minutes he's basically time traveling into the past so the events are the same as they were in the second ending version until charles meets sara they have met but this union is not happy why sara is not happy to reunite with charles she does not want him any more she has a child but who is the father of this child is a mystery sara says no he you know this child is not yours and charles is like disappointed disappointed charles leaves the house leaves sara moves ahead and wonders whether sara is a manipulative a cunning a wild woman who had exploited him because of sara he left you know his fiance because of sara he left an inheritance that could be his from his fiance's father he left everything and now sara is leaving him he decides to return to the united states and with this we are done with the french lieutenant's woman how did you like it <laughs> which ending do you want the second one where charles is hopeful that he will marry sara or the third one where sara does not want charles anymore say say you can comment down la few points to ponder these are really important listen in 1981 this novel was adopted into a film of the same name that is the film with the name the french lieutenant's woman the script was written by the english script writer harold pinter we know him right and it starred the famous meryl streep as sara and jeremy irons as charles okay after this john fowles other novels are 
the collector in the year 1963 and the magus in the year 1965 then next critic michelle phillips but you know buckberger buckberger describes the first ending as a semblance of verisimilitude in the traditional happy ending found in actual Victorian novels. First ending here means where Charles is hopeful that he would marry Sarah. Please remember this. Because the first ending where I told you that he married Ernestina, they uh, did not live happily, that narrator just dismisses as a daydream by Charles. Okay, so don't take that as the first ending. Here, the critic is talking about the ending where Charles is hopeful that he will meet Sarah. That is where Michelle is saying that it's a semblance of a verisimilitude in the traditional happy ending found in actual Victorian novels. Basically, it's a happy ending. Okay. Next point to ponder. Sam Farrow is Charles' servant in the novel. We know. We saw his name. And the relationship between the two is shown as a Marxist class struggle. Sam basically is uh, trying to exploit Charles. Sam wants to grow up. You know, their kind of struggle is shown like a Marxist class struggle. Who? Sam the servant and Charles his master. And the last point is, John Fowles and his wife had actually moved to Dorset and lived in a farmhouse, which became the basis for the diary in the French lieutenant's woman. Okay, easy. We are done. This is Hina from Team Walat and I am again telling you, coming Monday, we are starting with a quiz on Telegram based on my last week's capsule summaries. So this week I have done three summaries. You will find the questions based on these three summaries on our Telegram group from coming week. Okay. If you haven't joined Walla Telegram group, kindly do it right now. The link is actually in the description box. Okay. And if you like us, kindly comment and share our channel with your friends, families and relatives. Bye-bye.